at IEO, you really run the whole prostate radiation program. Well, what's, what's happening in radiation uh, treatment of prostate cancer at the moment? It's a very strange uh, point at the time because we have, the, uh, as always, has, it used to be for any local treatment, we have a, a huge competition between different local approaches. As you know, a standard treatment is surgery, and surgery evolved last year, in, has evolved in the last years. Uh, today you can hear about uh, robotic surgery, about uh, laparoscopic surgery, nerve sparing uh, surgery and so on. And obviously we, can, we have to keep the same uh, piece uh, with the surgeons since we, are, uh, we represent uh, another uh, local approach to, radi to uh, prostate cancer, radiation therapy. And um, we have the same uh, mini-invasive uh, approach, uh, mini-invasive radiotherapy. So it, it's kind of uh, smart radiotherapy, which is uh, becoming a, a standard for prostate cancer treatment. Um, very precise treatment, very localized treatment. Um, so obviously we have to have, uh, we have to know what we are going to treat. Yeah. And uh, so you image. Uh, yes, image. Yeah. Uh, so what, what, what today, modern radiotherapy is image guided radiotherapy, mm -hmm. and the, during this uh, conference, you can hear a lot of sessions, a lot of lectures on image guide, guide, guidance. You have to see your target, I and mean, it's the only way that you can. Um, uh, spare normal tissue, so you don't uh, um, you avoid the risk of uh, normal tissue complications, and you can have also some kind of nerve sparing radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. you, obviously, you will uh, have to have a, a magnetic resonance or a PET scan or whatever to see uh, your target, and in this way, you can um, really irradiate only the tumor just the and just the cancer. MR or PET. Um, what's your, it's what's it's your still better MRI. But the, I must say that the new uh, role of radiotherapy is emerging. It's a treatment machine with uh, image guidance in it. Ah. And in this way, during or before, just before each uh, treatment session or during the treatment session, you can follow, you can trace the uh, tumor. So it's different kind of radiotherapy that you see the target during or be just before the treatment. Okay. So for small cancers, uh, it's robotic smart radiation versus yes. smart surgery yeah. and, and, and those two are competing. They are competing but I think there is just a choice between surgery and not surgical uh, treatment. There are a lot of patients that are, they, they do prefer a non-invasive uh, mm. approach and it's you know just uh, short radiotherapy because we have uh, new hyperfractionation uh, mm. schedules and um, in this way in just a short time. Uh, a week. It can be even, there are some schedules, uh, just weak schedules, that the treatment is over. Okay, so that's the patient's decision after you've explained yeah. all the problems. Yeah, you have now, uh, you were also um, talking about radiotherapy as an adjuvant after surgery. But what kind of yeah. surgery and what kind of radiotherapy? Um, you know that in oncology, the main progress has been done due to multimodality approach. Mm. And this is a case, it's already history for uh, breast cancer, mm. esophageal cancer, rectal cancer and so on. They are actually all treated with multimodal approach. It has not been a case for prostate cancer. We still compete between mm. radiotherapy and surgery. And maybe it's not the case I, to go on on this competition. Uh, and it's true because in, just in these years, uh, three randomized trials mm -hmm. uh, have been published on adjuvant radiotherapy comparing surgery alone mm -hmm. versus surgery followed by post-op radiotherapy. Okay. And uh, obviously not all patients need this kind of multimodal approach. It's for high-risk patients. Yeah. So it can be any kind of surgery, open surgery, mm -hmm. robotic, nerve sparing surgery. But with some, um, obviously, these uh, risk factors, you know them after surgery, like positive margins, mm -hmm. like extracapsular tumors. Mm -hmm. And we know that up to 70% of this kind of patients will, uh, will relapse. Yeah. And Gleason comes into it or not? Doesn't, I mean, doesn't no molecular matter. markers, I mean, no pathology the, markers? Not no. yet. No. We are still, okay. I think, 30 years ago when yeah. you compare with uh, breast cancer. We yeah, are now crazy. where they, crazy. they were in the 80s or in 70s sure. even. Yeah. So it's still a long way to... to, yeah. to, to but do. that's coming, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. 
So the first step is just kind of multimodality treatment to see which patients need a multimodal approach. And for example, this combination of, chemo of uh, radiotherapy and uh, surgery. surgery and radiotherapy adds two years for overall survival. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge difference, a huge difference. And if you compare with the new drugs like uh, Taxotere, uh, Docetaxel, which has been uh, you know, so uh, widely uh, claimed to be a progress in prostate cancer uh, treatment, it adds only two months. Yeah. Or if you take a vaccine, the new vaccine, just April this year, you know, obviously the We're data. still talking months. And it's yeah. four months. Sure, 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 sure. Adjuvant radiotherapy adds two years. And it's the American study showing this. So mm. uh, absolutely, it's the main, probably the main progress in mm. these uh, years that we saw for prostate cancer. And what's the radiotherapy that you're giving? post-operative? Uh, it's even more difficult because you have only a virtual uh, space mm -hmm. to irradiate and obviously there are normal tissue in it. Mm -hmm. So uh, for this kind of radio radiotherapy you really, you really need a smart treatment otherwise you run the problem and you just add toxicity because the, problem, the patient after all uh, he gets two treatments yeah. both surgery and irradiation. And that means smart imaging again. So again, again MR, MRI is the best. Uh, an image guidance, yeah. mean, which means that again, you look, uh, you see the target um, very precisely mm. every day. You yeah. just treat mm. what you want to treat. You mm. see what you treat and you treat what you see. And how many fractions? And is this also intensive modulation? Or? Uh, yeah, um, again, we have data both um, clinical but also uh, biological data showing that prostate cancer benefits from uh, hypofractionation, which means uh, higher dose per fraction, shorter treatment. Uh, and the same approach has been uh, studied in post-op uh, post approach. So it's a shorter treatment, it's not eight weeks, but now it, it becomes something like six or five week treatment. Mm -hmm. But we still need uh, more data on it since all um, uh, three randomized trials, they were uh, they, uh, studied conventional, conventional. Six, uh, weeks. Yeah, six weeks. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Okay, so the, the new state of the art, and this will be your practice in IEO when you go back from Barcelona, is post-op. I must say that, uh, you know, the percentage of patients treated post-operatively is increasing. And I must say that some years ago we had something like 80-90% of radical treatment, so mm. not operated patients, and 10 or 20 percent post-op or salvage mm. radiotherapy. Nowadays, it, I must say that it's something like 50 percent post-op treatment and 50 percent curative treatment. So it's, you know, it's becoming a different um, mm. uh, patient, yeah. yes, uh, population. Um, just a couple more questions. Um, what about the other way around, adjuvant surgery after radiotherapy? Uh, it, it, it can be performed mm -hmm. and uh, our urologist, Professor De Cobelli, has some experience on this. I must say that it's not such a common situation. Mm -hmm. The patient re uh, experiences relapse after radiotherapy. It's usually something like 10 or 15 years after okay. the primary treatment. Mm -hmm. So there are some technical problems, I guess. Mm -hmm. Also because the patient is already, you know, something like 15 years more. Mm -hmm. The mean patient age at radiotherapy is about 70 years, so they are already 80 or 85 when they have a relapse. And we still can re-irradiate them. There is a very nice experience, we published this data on a cyber knife treatment, re-irradiation. Mm -hmm. So you can repeat radiotherapy if, it, uh, if the relapse is so uh, late, mm -hmm. you can repeat it again in a very smart, very precise uh, mm -hmm. way. You cannot uh, irradiate the same uh, tissue uh, twice. So you mm, have to perform even more uh, precise, more limited uh, irradiation, but you can still re-irradiate and not to, um, uh, to, to perform the open surgery as a salvage surgery. At 85, that's a different yeah, problem. Yeah, it's a, it's a mm -hmm. problem, I think. Just, just a last... Uh, 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 commentary, please, uh, Barbara, on a hormone treatment. Where are we now? Where does this anti-androgen treatment fill, fit into the spectrum? The, uh, contrarily to surgery, we have a lot of uh, good randomized trials on androgen deprivation and radiotherapy. Mm. It adds, it improves survival in high-risk patients. It improves survival in intermediate risk pa pa patients. There are some well-established uh, protocols for the duration of uh, antigen deprivation. 
what is important that there is a um, synergic approach between these two treatments. So uh, uh, androgen deprivation in increases uh, radiosensibility of the mm. cancer tissue. I didn't know that. Mm, yeah, so that's why it's always given during the treatment and then uh, for six months or longer, up to two, um, two years in high-risk patients. Uh, we still don't know if we really need it in all situations. Mm. We know that dose escalation of radiotherapy improves results. Mm. We know that androgen deprivation added to radiotherapy improves uh, results. We don't know if we have to combine both strategies. Mm -hmm. mm. Dose escalation, which we already can do every day, with androgen deprivation. So maybe we need only, it's enough that we escalate the dose or we add androgen deprivation. So we still have to understand which patients should uh, give both sure. new uh, sure. strategies. Sure. Baru, a question on this smart radiotherapy. What are the options? I hear about knives, different yeah. kinds. What, 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 are this, what are the kind of options for smart radiotherapy? There are plenty of options, yeah. so you really don't know what to choose and if you go to see you know, the exhibition here you will really understand that it's, uh, you are really in a difficult situation when you have to, when you have to choose one or two new machines yeah. and you don't know what to choose because they are all really uh, great. Yeah. Uh, Cyberknife, uh, Rapidark, um, Tomotherapy and so on. All of these new uh, approaches has, have uh, image guidance, which mm. means that you see what you treat and you treat what you see. Good. And you can uh, follow the tumor not only before or between the fractions, but also during the treatment fraction, mm. and it's the case for CyberKnife. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have to have a first um, um, marker, mm. uh, gold seed or sure. whatever yeah. implanted in the... And you can always refer, refer yeah. to and it. And then you see it during the treatment. Mm. And CyberKnife is um, it's such a um, precise way of treating the tumor that we add only something like one or two millimeter, um, millimeter margin, okay. which is very, very narrow margins so if you compare mm. to conventional radiotherapy mm, when, you, when we add 15 millimeters, mm. just to be sure that we cover our target. Mm. Gamma knife? Gamma knife is, uh, again, a stereotactic radiotherapy. We're sure. using, it's, let's say, a conventional way of uh, giving stereotactic treatment with the cobalt uh, uh, sources. And again, it's a very precise uh, radio surgery. You just treat a very small uh, yeah. targets. Mm -hmm. Good. Any other ones coming down the line? More, more coming at this exhibition. You're going to see something you don't know about. I, I haven't uh, seen. Uh, it, but yeah, I will. I have to see uh, the okay. new. We'll interview you again after you've been to the exhibition to see all the other new things. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dean. Okay. <laughs>